Hello, my name is Steve Bowler, and in this video I'm going to be configuring Border Gateway Protocol, BGP, Authentication, and Time to Live Security, or TTL Security. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go over how to set up BGP Authentication, uh, MD5 Authentication between two peers, two BGP peers, and we're also going to take a look at how to configure uh, TTL security with BGP. Uh, as you might already know, uh, BGP authentication uh, will basically just allows you know the peer uh, to to come up only if the authentication procedure or I'm sorry authentication process is uh, verified so what we're going to do here is we're going to set up BGP between router 1 and router 2 and then we'll go ahead and take a look at BGP authentication we'll do some show commands to verify connectivity maybe some debug commands to uh, verify exactly what's going on in the process and then we'll go ahead and take a look at TTL BGP TTL security and basically TTL security is uh, another uh, feature um, within BGP that uh, will allow you to only peer with uh, certain routers that are a certain amount of hops away from you. Um, this can be used bec um, to prevent you know security attacks, people trying to peer from you with you from the internet or you know from a lot of hops away. What you can do is set the TTL uh, hops uh, to you know two or a real low number of hops so that you know uh, any any other peer, anybody else that tries to peer with you, you know, outside of that set hop range, will uh, be automatically declined to peer. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that in a minute. Let's go ahead here and get into router one, and uh, go ahead and set this guy up. Again, this is BGP Lab 6. The other first five labs um, at this time, this is uh, July of uh, 2010, at this time those labs are part of Volume 1, and this lab is going to be part of Volume 2. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just make router 1, we'll just have an external BGP connection here between router 1 and 2. Uh, router 1 is going to be an AS100, Autonomous System 100, and let's see, router 2 is going to be an AS200. And the link between them... Just give it uh, an IP address of one ninety four dot one dot or let's do this one ninety four dot twelve dot twelve dot zero slash uh, let's see slash thirty on this uh, on this link here. So we'll go ahead and configure router 1, interface 000, 
is pointing towards router 2. We'll just put an IP address of 194.12.12.1. Subnet mask of slash 30. Uh, we'll go ahead and do a no shut. Router 2, we'll go ahead in here and do a interface serial 00 because that's the interface that connects router 2 to router 1. Let's give it the IP address of 192.168. I'm sorry. 194.12.12.2 with the slash 30 subnet mask. Let's go ahead and do a no shut. And before we proceed, I just like to always verify that we have layer 3 reachability from the interfaces, the point to point interfaces. So let's do a quick ping 194.12.12.2 from router 1. And we have connectivity. So next, what we'll do is we'll take a look at um, we'll take a look at configuring BGP here on router one and two. So router BGP is going to be the autonomous system is going to be 100. Let's do a no auto summary and no synchronization. What we're going to do next here is we'll configure the BGP neighbor and we'll just get the link up first and then we'll do authentication. So the neighbor is going to be 194. Of course it's going to be on external BGP. It's going to be the peers um, interface IP address or you can you know use the loopback uh, interface and do external BGP multi hop, and then you also have to set up the update source to you know the loop back so that your you know up BGP updates are coming from your loop back instead of you know your serial interface here. But we'll just keep it simple in this lab, we'll just do uh, the neighbor just going to peer directly to the other uh, interface IP. So in router one, that's going to be dot two, and we're going to put here the remote autonomous system is going to be 200 and we'll go ahead on router 2 and do router BGP 200 again that's the AS number if we go back here and do router BGP autonomous system number is going to be 200 and the neighbor is going to be 194.12.12.1 12 .12 and the remote AS is going to be 100 So we'll give BGP a second here. It's a pretty slow protocol to uh, converge, obviously, because we want it to be that way. Uh, we don't want it converging real fast because this is the protocol that runs pretty much the internet. And with all the routes on the internet, we don't want you know neighbors converging fast, you know, because what could happen is you just pretty much bog blo uh, bog down your router because you got all those you know updates every time you know your adjacency flaps all the uh, processes in BGP have to run and it can be a real burden on your CPU so that's why the hold down and dead timers are um, pretty high in BGP anyway um, what we see here is that we have the adjacency has come up now between router 1 and 2. So if I do a show IP BGP summary, uh, as you can see here, we have an uptime of one minute exactly with router 2, which is an AS200. Um, what we'll do, we'll just create an interface here, loopback 0. Let's give it an IP on router 1. We'll just do um, Let's see. We'll give this guy Oh, 
and then we'll advertise this network into BGP. Mask is going to be a slash 24. And now if I do a show IP BGP, you can see here that the network has been added to the routing table as shown with the greater than sign. I always want to make sure you got the greater than sign. If you don't have that, then there's a problem. And that route is not being entered into the uh, routing table. So router 2 should have this now if I do a show IP route. As you can see here, we're learning that network via BGP. Let's go into router 2 and get a loop back in there as well. Let's do IP address 222. 222, 222, 222. Again, let's make it a slash 24. And, well, that's pretty close. I didn't even realize. We're flirting with the uh, multicast range almost there. But we're not in the multicast range, so we're good to go. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, go under BGP AS200 here on router 2, and we'll advertise this network into BGP. The mask is going to be a slash 24. Again, if the network command here is, you know, if the network that we advertise in the BGP does not exactly match the, uh, you know, the network that we have on the router, then that route will not be added into the uh, BGP routing table. So if we do a uh, show IP BGP on router 2, we can see now that we see the both the networks. On router 1, we should see the route learned via BGP from router 2. And we have the same thing here on router 1. I'm sorry, router 2 is learning router 1's loop back. and we have reachability. So, um, the point of this, I just wanted to advertise some routes into BGP so that, you know, when we bring up, you know, authentication and stuff, we can just see what happens with these routes. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to set up authentication on router 1 first. We'll just do, on router 2, we'll do a debug IP BGP. and then we'll see what happens here inside of BGP on router 2 once we configure authentication on uh, router 1. So here we'll do uh, neighbor and then we'll put our neighbor IP which is 194.12.12.2 which is router 2 and then we'll put in the command for auth authentication is pretty simple here with BGP we just want to use the password after the neighbor so we specify the neighbor and then after that we just want to put in the password uh, command and of course we have you know encryption types we can add here uh, we'll just do zero and then the password and in this case we'll just do uh, Cisco all lowercase Okay, looks like we're getting, let's do a debug IP BGP events and maybe updates, keep alive. As you can see here on router one, we're getting a an error that's saying no MD5 digest from basically, you know, router 2. Port is here, 179. Is so.
Now if we go ahead and do um, a show IP BGP summary. Alright, let's do a show IP BGP neighbor 194.12.12.1 on router 2. Let's see if I do a show IP protocols. Ah, let's do this. Let's take off the debugs on router 2. And let's see here if we have anything. Okay, now you can see here after a dead time expired, hold down time expired, as you can see um, that our BGP relationship has dropped. So again, this is because on one side of this we have authentication and the other side we do not. Uh, one side is saying no MD5 digest, you know, from basically our peer, which is router 2 and that's on router 1 and then on router 2 we're just seeing uh, the hold time expired and the BGP process has dropped so if I do a show IP BGP sum on router 2 um, now you can see the the state of BGP has turned into active which is not good uh, that means that there is no peer relationship if I do a show IP route as you can see here now I'm not learning the route from router one now inside of my routing table so let's do this let's go into router two we'll do a router bgp 200 we'll do neighbor 194.12.12.1 and we'll configure a password but we'll do a the wrong password and we'll see what happens So we've configured a password on router 2, however, the password is, of course, it's not the same. And as we can see here, we're still not seeing the peer adjacency uh, form. Uh, now we're actually seeing on router 2 a, a, uh, an error, invalid MD5 digest from router 1. So, as you can see here, both routers think they have the correct password, and they're actually saying that the other side is uh, has the, the wrong password. So this is a very common case scenario that you might see you know in your log and your routers um, basically uh, BGP authentication errors so what you need to do is just go in you know just check your your passwords you know under your neighbor statements and make sure that your passwords match and as you can see here the passwords are different so the neighbor adjacency is never going to come up so let's just go to router 2 and fix this Let's go to router 2 and do router BGP 200 and we'll configure the correct password here. Again, before we were seeing no MD5 digest, so that indicates that there is no password on router 2 set, but we did have a password on router 1. Then we got invalid MD5 digest once we set the password on router 2. So, as you can see, both routers thought they had the correct password. Um, 
so it makes it kind of hard to determine which router actually does have the wrong password so you just need to go into your BGP configuration on both sides uh, under the neighbor uh, that you're peering with with MD5 authentication and just check it manually uh, now as you can see our adjacency has come up now that we have the same authentication um, the same BGP authentication password and we're still getting an error here I don't know why that is uh, if I do a show IP BGP sum now you can see here that we have uh, established a neighbor adjacency with router 2 if I do a show IP route you can see now that I'm learning the loopback interface of router 2 that we advertise into BGP and I am able to ping it So let's go ahead and do a clear IP BGP. So we're going to clear the neighbor relationship. I'm just going to I'm curious to see if we can see any um, any events that pop up here when when we have a debug IP BGP running on router two. and it didn't take long at all there for a BGP relationship to become uh, established so as you can see just with the debug IP BGP command we can't really see any authentication happening uh, however um, we just went through how to set up BGP authentication between two routers and now we're going to set up uh, the TTL security feature of BGP um, again the TTL security feature of BGP is going to be used to you know prevent uh, against you know network uh, security uh, attacks you know um, invalid routers trying to attack your uh you know, our form and adjacency with your BGP you know your router running BGP um, from the internet are um, you know from a, a location that's uh, far away so what you can do is you can actually set the TTL count um, you know in this case the command if we go under router 1 we'll go ahead and do a router BGP 100 then we'll follow it up with router 2 as the neighbor and then as you can see here we have the BGP TTL security check uh, which is the TTL security option under the neighbor so we'll do TTL security and then hops and the maximum number of hops away ba basically this is saying the neighbor can only be this certain amount of hops away or else if it's any uh, any farther out hops than specified other you know then we specify here then the BGP uh, neighbor relationship will not form Uh, because a lot of people might not uh, know this but BGP does have a uh, maximum hop count uh, feature it is a path vector protocol so it does use hop count in its metric 
again this is another way to bring that to light here we can set the maximum number of hops that our peer is going to be away um, and if someone is trying to peer with us you know uh, they're trying to you know peer with us from without you know outside of that hop range we're going to uh, pretty much deny them uh, a neighbor relationship so we'll just set it here TTL security hops two, and we'll go ahead and router two and do the same here so router two we'll do router BGP 200 and we'll go into the neighbor which is router one and do a TTL security hops and hit enter. Now if we go ahead and try to trace you know 194.12.12.2 is what we're peering with via BGP we should only see you know just one hop away so let's go ahead here and maybe take a look at this TTL security hops uh, feature set in BGP and see if we can um, actually see this feature in action. What we'll do is we will set the We'll take this statement off, the hops2. We'll do a no neighbor on this, on both sides here. We'll do a neighbor 194.12.12.2. TTL security hops is going to be 1. Same here on router 2. Show run, pipe to begin. BGP. Okay, now what we're going to do, uh, now that we set the hops command to 1, um, let's go ahead and do this. To see this actually in action, between two routers we can actually do this. We will... Let's go ahead and use this we'll use our loopback zero interfaces to peer with on router one and two uh... that way what we're going to see here is that we're going to be two hops away so this TTL security hops one should you know make it so that we never uh... form an adjacency but let's go ahead and take this off of here again let's just um, let's go ahead and do this so that we can see this in action. We'll do neighbor two 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 two. So what we're thinking here is we're going to set up the neighbor adjacencies to form between the loopbacks of router one and two. So we have to uh, set up here, you know, um, our update source loopback zero. Specify remote AS our peer group. Uh, yeah, shoot. So we got three commands here. We got to do the remote AS two hundred update source loopback zero and eBGP multi hop. 
because by default external BGP has to peer directly uh, has to be a direct directly connected peer but we can you know um, we can override that with the e bgp multi hop command and by default if you just put e bgp multi hop if we do a show run pipe to begin bgp we should see here a um, it should be 255 uh, set the ttl to 255 by default here so let's go in here and um, get these other neighbor commands out of here. So router BGP 100, no. And then no. Again, our theory, our, or what we're going to try to do here is uh, set the TTL uh, security hops to one, and then you know we're going to be doing eBGP multi hop uh, by having a peer connection between these two routers using uh, you know the loopback. So we're going to have a TTL of two is what we're going to see. So what we're going to see here is uh, we're going to try to do. Um, try to see this neighbor relationship broken by the TTL security hops command. So again, we're going to peer to router 1's loopback 0, so we'll do a neighbor. Then update, I'm sorry, we're going to specify the remote AS first. It's going to be 100. Then neighbor update source loopback zero, and then not last but not least, we're going to specify eBGP a multi hop. do a on all here and we might have to I was just thinking here what we might have to do here is configure a static route pointing to the neighbors address here. So we'll just go ahead and do IP route and the network. And then the exit interface here is going to be serial zero zero. It says inconsistent uh, address and mask. Let's see. Same thing here on router 1. We'll just have a route here to the 11 network pointing out the exit interface here, which is serial 0, 0. So, as you can see, the, uh, the commands to get this to form is uh, a lot when you're doing eBGP multi hop between uh, two external BGP peers uh, to validate, you know, to. Uh, to peer across, you know, loopback interfaces.
let's just make sure that we have this configured correctly. Getting an unroutable error on router one. Trying to ping router two's loop back. Let's look again here and see what's going on. Uh, looks like we have a slash twenty four mask in here. That might be the. <coughs> problem here let's do a show run on router one Looks like I put the wrong. That's what it is on router. Shoot. <laughs> on router one, I put the uh, wrong static route in. As you can see here, I used the 11, my own network. So, routing my own network out, my own directly connected out my serial. I don't know why I did that. But let's go ahead and put in here IP route to the correct destination, which is router two. Router two's loop back. And now we should have connectivity and the BGP neighbor relationship. The neighbor relationship should now come up here. <laughs> Give it a second. As you see here, we have our neighbor relationship has just come up between the two routers so we do a show IP BGP summary we can see here now that we have been established for about 10 seconds um, now we're gonna set up the TTL command because if I go ahead and try to trace to the neighbor you should see a max we should see two hops here <laughs> We'll go to router 2 and set up the neighbor command. TTL security, and then we'll put in hops. See here, our first hop is to router 2 serial. And actually, that let's, let's try this. Let's just try it here. Ah, now we're <laughs> now what we're seeing here is the remove external BGP multi hop before configuring TTL security because these two commands, and that's what I was thinking uh, earlier, is you know they kind of overlap in what they are trying to achieve. Uh, they're so.
I guess we I won't be able to show you this here in this lab, uh, TTL security in action without having to you know add, you know maybe another router into the mix, but. Um, Let me go ahead and remove the um, this configuration here real fast. Okay, so what I did is I just removed the uh, you know the peer between peering relationship between router one and two over the loopbacks. We're back to just peering uh, over directly connected. So if I do a show IP BGP sum on router one, as you can see here, we're peering with uh, router two via the 12 network. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's correct. Um, so let's go back under the under BGP and set up TTL security. So we'll do the neighbor 194.12.12.1 which is router 1 and follow that with TTL security hops and then we can specify here um, you know, the minimum amount of hops that we're going to do is one, because router one is one hop away. Go back to router two. I'm sorry, go back to router one and do, go under BGP AS100. And specify router two. And we'll set up TTL security. Hops is going to be one. And we can verify this by just doing a show IP BGP neighbor 194.12.12.2 and then See here the connection here. External BGP neighbor may be up to one hop away. So any other time we're doing this, um, you know, say we take this command off a of router two. And then take a look at the neighbor relationship here, do a show IP BGP neighbor 194.12.12.1 um, what we're going to see here Is that it doesn't specify the the uh, TTL because where it should say here external BGP neighbor may be up to one hop away um, in that same location here we don't have anything but by default I believe uh, external BGP can peer you know, up to I think two, two hundred and fifty-four hops away. Or I mean, two hundred and fifty-five. But of course, every router is gonna, you know, uh, decrement the TTL by one. <laughs> So, as you can see here, our peer relationship has gone down because we have set the TTL security hop count here on router 1 to 1, but we don't have anything configured here on router 2. So let's go back to router 2 and get that set up here again. So router BGP 200 and do a...
and as you can see once I set that command on router 2 our BGP neighbor relationship um, uh, became established again so again we went over BGP authentication in this lab you know it uses MD5 and it's set up under the neighbor statement with BGP uh, whichever neighbor you're pointing towards our select you just type in the password and uh, the password command so if we look at the running config for BGP actually we don't have it here anymore in router 1 or 2 but it's just neighbor uh, then the neighbor IP address then followed by the password prompt I'm sorry the password feature and then whatever you want to set the password as then we also went over here we looked at the TTL security feature um, we we looked at why you would set that up and in this case we would set up TTL security uh, so that um, basically to prevent uh, network security attacks by uh, outside uh, sources that are trying to you know uh, perform or become adjacent with the local router are to um, uh, also another reason to to set up TTL security is to uh, to protect the ra local router against uh, you know CPU attacks on the local router um, and we did this by going under the neighbor, uh, under B, uh, BGP on the router and putting in the, the external neighbor IP address, external BGP neighbor, and then we followed that up with the TTL security uh, command, TTL security hops command, and then we specified the amount of, uh, the maximum amount of hops away that the neighbor can be. So in this case, we have a hop count of one between router one and two, so that's the max. So anywhere, if we were to put a, a router outside of here and then try to peer, you know, with router two through router one, uh, and we have the security hop set to one, um, this router will not be able to peer with router two because the hop count will be at the... Um, will be two and we have here a TTL security hop count of one between neighbors so um, we also tried to set it up you know using uh, I tried to increase the the hop count um, using external BGP multi hop and setting you know setting up the uh, the peer you know the routers to peer over the loopback zero interfaces uh, however, uh, there was a conflict of interest with the eBGP multi-hop command using that and the TTL security hop command because uh, the two pretty much cannot be put under the same conf configuration to this, you know, the same uh, neighbor. So I hope you guys have uh, enjoyed this video and I hope you'll be with me with the next one. Thanks.